Hello and welcome back to Warhammer Geheimisnacht. This time we're starting a new campaign and we're going to be playing the Followers of Nurgle. And we are going to be attempting to become either a Demon Prince or become Ever Chosen or basically just get whatever the gods will give us. So, what are the special kind of mechanics for, well, Chaos People? Basically, they can, they've got a CB where they can declare war on people, take land, and they will gain favours for taking that land with uh, their god. Whichever god it is, for, our, for us it is Nurgle. And then they can, that will increase their chance of getting extra, fa like extra gifts from the gods. Also, they can then give away piety and I think it's money to the gods and that will allow them to have a chance of getting some kind of reward. Now if you give a lot of stuff to the gods you'll get a better chance of getting a large reward. If you give a small amount you can still get the largest reward but you have less chance and it might be bad for you. So there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. The Nur uh, followers of Nurgle also start as a clan, as a nomad clan, which is quite interesting because it's a little bit different than the uh, human side of kind of semi-tribal thing. This is full-on nomads. Also, I believe that uh, Chaos can't actually build buildings or if they build buildings and things, they will slowly get broken down over time. I'm, I read something about that, but I'm not entirely sure how it works in practice. So, let's jump right in. Let's... Uh, Get rid of that one. Uh, gameplay options. We will be playing the purely canon experience. This means we cannot marry outside of our race, nor can we switch to another race's religion. Basically, you can't race switch in the game. You just play as, like, if we are human, we are human forever. Pretty much that is it. This is our small land here. We currently control three out of the four provinces that we have in our realm. The other one is owned by the Som... Uh, the, uh... Sokmenid clan, and we will soon be getting rid of them, so we don't need to worry about them too much. Uh, although we need to have, I think, no, we can we can get rid of them now. So we're going to absorb their clan. An interesting thing is we also don't start with any kind of levies. We have no levies at all. We just start with a horde, a horde of troops that reinforce and that we then have to uh, pay for more of. And we start with some interesting things like War Beast, which could be very, very strong and allow us to conquer a lot of land. Although a lot of the people around us are also Chaos, so that might not be so easy. So yeah, our first move is we're going to get rid of this clan here. This clan currently has 750 men, the same as us, but I think that we can get rid of them. And then once we get rid of them, we'll get rid of this over clan limit uh, ridiculousness that's going on. And then we can just uh, kind of absorb that bit. Then we can go into conquering without having to worry about this other clan who's going to hate us. Right, so let's just start that right up. Absorb clan. There we go, we get what they think of it. Uh, we'll leave everything else until after we've done that. Apart from pick an ambition, we are going to pick win a war. Because we're going to win a war against this clan here. We're also going to pick a character focus. I think martial is probably a reasonable skill to go for, so war would be a good choice. Let's we'll stick on that. Uh, ruler is unmarried. We'll leave that for just now. Yep, I think we're ready to just uh, jump into this war. Head over. Uh, we will, of course, be leading one of the flanks. Uh, who else will be leading one? Probably you should lead one. You are unsightly, though. That's a new one I haven't seen. Hmm. Just gen as like a worse version of uh, ugly. Okay. You'll be fine. Fight. Oh no. We want to be leading one flank. We want you to be leading the other flank. Uh, actually, we want him to be leading this flank because there's men in it. And the other flank doesn't actually matter, but we'll put someone in it just to be, uh, for completely. completeness sake. Right. Let's uh, move on a little bit quicker. Birth of the Hassassin. Word is spreading that Milton Orismanic prophet Al Tahir has formed a religious order known as the Hassassin somewhere in Western Araby. Used Using trickery and guile, this mysterious cult of trained killers has seized control of the mountain fortress of Gelk and converted it into their headquarters. Already, a string of violent murders can be traced back to Al Tahir's devoted and fearless disciples. These upstart acrobats are harmless. Okay. They're going to get a couple of flavor things from across the sea as we get started here. Just because they're, they happen in every campaign. Yup, he said no, he is no longer our spy master. We are now at war with him for his land. Or at least to imprison him. Yeah. So we're going to go walk over there. Does he actually have any men still or did he? Yeah, he has no men. I think he actually disbands his men straight away because he can't afford to pay for them. So he just disbands them. 
Uh, rumours reach you that in the distant lands of Sylvania, a powerful vampire by the name of Vlad von Karstein has summoned a massive army of undead and makes war upon the fragmented empire. Okay. That's about my reaction to it as well. It doesn't really affect us. Oh, what's happening over here? Some kind of revolt? Um, are they in our war? No. Uh, they are in war to install them as can of Nerch. Is this this one then, I assume? Yes, okay, so there's there is a revolt happening on that side. It's not our revolt though. I was worried he somehow joined in because all the borders turned a bit red. But he just changed his colour. There we go. I think we've already won this war, we just have to siege it down. It's fairly easy, but it's something that we need to do in order to actually expand. Once we take another province, however, we are going to have to release another clan and start the whole clan uh, releasing business that keeps happening in this kind of campaign. So basically, the way nomads work is that you are allowed to hold a certain amount of land yourself, but you are not allowed to hold a significant amount over another clan. So say that you hold, um, you hold four provinces, and they only hold one, they will want your other, one of your other provinces to even things up. You can still be a little bit stronger, but you can't be, you know, so strong that they can't fight you. So it's a little bit of an interesting system. You also can't get too big without ha having to release vassals, like release their clans. So you have to kind of work out where you want to do that. Probably you want to keep clan lands kind of even around, like you want to keep uh, the clan kind of connected, uh, just so it's easier to... Uh, for them to get their troops together. Unless, of course, you want to do the trick of always having, like, one province from each clan on the front line, and then what you can do is you can just say, you can just get them to teleport all their troops to the front line of every battle, which can be interesting. Uh, what's interesting about chaos with this is that generally the problem with uh, nomads is that when all the lands break down, is when you're giving away the lands, they need to have farmland in which to kind of survive. But, if you're Chaos, I believe that buildings and other such holdings break down into tribal holdings and things below it. So that might mean that the clans actually, you can give them any land and they'll be fine with it, which could simplify the process a little bit. Anyway, we've won this war, let's enforce demands. We have got him in prison, I would like to absorb your clan. There we go. He is gone. We now hold that area. And he is still our prisoner, right? Yeah. We could ransom him off for 10 gold, execute him, or uh, do well, or we can release him. I think we're just going to execute him. Don't want any former people with their uh, claims around. Goodbye. Okay. So, let's get back to the actual starting of uh, setting everything up. So, we want a good chancellor. He seems to be doing the job. He's got 17 diplomacy. Okay. Next one, Marshall. He is, he is the best for the job. Next one, Stuart. Uh, he is also the best for the job, although... Uh, no, he is the best for the job. Spymaster. We want probably Mary in charge of our spy mastering, And Court Priest, we do not have one, so we need to buy one. We will buy a court to our... Like, uh, a priest to our court. There we go. Everything is set up. Now, uh, we can't actually improve religious relations with anyone because our religion has no religious head, so there's no real point and we don't have any strong uh, religious vassals, so probably research uh, cultural tech with him. We're not going to convert the lands just yet. We'll probably give away any lands we want to convert to a different clan. Hey, uh, you, we want you to probably study technology. What's our technology level? 666. Very funny. Uh, and uh, how far away can we go? So we can have a look here. All the green areas where we can actually uh, study. So I just want to have a look in this province here. 12 to 12, I believe that is the highest from when we checked last time. So we'll study technology in Britonia. Okay, we want to collect tribute. Oh, that's only if we have another... Uh, yeah, from vassals and tributary rulers, so... We don't need to do that. Uh, probably research economic tech then, well, because we don't have any other uh, vassals. Um, we're going to quickly make this guy forbidden to lead armies, and then he can... Hmm, probably train warriors, because that'll increase our manpower growth, and that'll mean that we can keep this army uh, up for longer, so we'll do that. And improved clan sentiment is probably what we'll have this guy doing most of the time, but we don't have any clans, so we'll just leave him doing nothing. Okay, we need to get married. That's the next step. So, oh, that didn't count as winning a war? Interesting, I guess you have to win a war, uh, an external war opposed to an internal war to get that to far. Okay. So, we are going to be looking for somebody 
probably high diplomacy would be a good idea. But we would also want to probably marry someone of our religion, which would only leave our spy master. I don't want to marry our spy master, so we'll marry outside of our religion. Ooh, someone has magic potential. That could be a good one to look for. If we could marry someone with magic t uh, potential, that would be good because our children would then inherit the magical potential and we could possibly have some magic going on. Because uh, apparently there are a couple of different ways to do uh, to get magic, which I looked a little bit more into. And one of them is if you have magic in your bloodline, it will be it, there is a chance of it being inherited. So I think that would be a good idea. And she's the only one with magical potential. High uh, stewardship, so we'll get a little bit more money, I think. Although we don't actually have any... Not actually getting any taxes or anything, so... Uh, actually, do we get any money from our holding? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, no, we get no money from our holding, so stewardship doesn't actually help with that at all. Uh, but whatever, we're going to marry her. Where did she go? There she is. I would like to marry you. Oh, she holds some land as well. What land does she hold? Uh, she holds all the way down there. Oh, okay. Uh, she's probably going to lose her own land, which is unfortunate, but that's fine. Uh, I would like to marry you. Yes. Uh, we can also take a couple of concubines, and probably should, because it affects our prestige. Uh, I think if we have a couple of concubines, it allows us to have like our prestige to go up. Uh, so what's the max number of concubines? I think uh, for Nurgle, we can actually check up here. For Nurgle, it is two concubines, but for Nomadic, it is three, so I'm not sure which one we, uh, like, overrides the other. I suspect Nurgle overrides, in which case we'd have two concubines. Now, let's have a quick look. Uh, we can probably search all for people who are women, not in prison, not married, not a ruler, my religion, my culture. That's not a great list, but actually we could make her a concubine. Our spy master being a concubine isn't a bad idea. We can make you a concubine as well. Oh, we can only do one at a time? Okay. Whole bunch of people arriving at our court. I guess another Nurgle realm uh, just died out there. Okay. Yeah, so many people are arriving at our court right now. Um, Someone and Great Tsar Albus have got married. We can co collect a royal aid duty for the ceremonies. Well, we will uh, get the prestige because prestige allows us to do certain actions. Which is quite nice. Okay, we've got the first concubine. Let's get the second one, which would be you. I would like you to be our concubine. Wait a little bit. She is our concubine. Now, can we get another one, or are we at our max? Now, let's look for people who are not my cult. Actually, can we reset the list? Let's see if any people joined in. Nope. Now, let's look for a not in our culture. So maybe you. Uh, you can't. Uh, they're out of diplomatic range. Okay. Uh, in which case we will hire, we will get a debutante. There we go. Present debutante. And uh, what was her name? I completely missed it. She should be in our realm somewhere. I'll just use this to find her. Uh, my culture. There we go. We can take her as a concubine. So nomad overrides uh, Nurgle. So cool. We'll take her as a concubine as well. We just want to have an heir because uh, certain demon things mean that you can't have an heir after a certain point. And I want to get make sure that we have like the realm secure before we go into doing anything too dangerous. Right, we also have some commander titles we can give out. Let's see if we've got anyone good. Um, you're alright. I mean, tr I don't like Trickster at all. I really dislike experimentality because uh, it changes. I believe it means they can use a random tactic in combat, so it's it can be uh, detrimental. Uh, I think we'll choose him. He seems fine. Right, they have... Right, our neighbours have slightly more men than us. Oh, that's not our neighbour's army. That's actually um, a different army. That's these these guys' army is sitting on, on our neighbour. So we can attack our neighbour. Quickly declare a war. I see we got everything else set up. Should probably check that. Yep. Everything seems about right. Nothing seeming off just yet. Nope. Uh, there are a couple of events in here. Oh, we should choose a war horse because that's a uh, that's a nomad thing, and it just gives you a small bonus. Uh, you go out to the herd and choose a strong, and powerful war horse. You look around with expert eyes and eventually spot a steed that stands out from the rest. It is strong and has powerful bearing. As you mount your new steed, you feel certain you have made the right choice. All that remains now is to give it a suitable name. What shall it be? 
Uh, we'll name it uh, Dragon. There you go. We have a horse. We can also do war games and things, but we don't need to. Uh, right. Yes, there are a couple of other options like um, we can open a slavery menu if we get some slaves. We can try and teach ourselves magic if we have high enough learning. Not Probably not going to do that. But Chaos Offering is the main uh, thing in this area. Basically, if we have enough piety and we have enough wealth, we can then make an offering. And obviously, the more piety and the more wealth you have, the larger offering. So this is basically, that is the minimum offering, is 500 piety, 250 personal wealth. But you can make a larger offering if you have more money. So we can probably leave that for just now. Until we've got like the realm all together. So I want to declare war and we can get a Nurgleite favor here. I would like to... Oh, where's it gone? There should be a... Uh, when, I when I did my test one, there was a Chaos... Uh, Cast a spell? Oh, unholy sub subjugation. A spell. I guess we can't do it because someone else is already doing it on the province or something. Possibly. Now, this guy only has uh, 375 troops, so we can possibly make like jump through and attack him instead. That seems like a good idea. I also really, really like being a uh, nomad uh, because you, you can have an army permanently up. It's a bit like EU4 in that respect. Right. Let's uh, declare war. The, which one do we want? Do we want Ruen or do we want Astrakhan? Um, well, with just double checking, that is actually this province, right? Kingdom of Astrakhan. Okay, so yeah, we probably want this one because that will allow us to get into Alls. Uh, okay, we can do that. That will give us a favor with Nurgle. He will lose piety, we'll gain piety, and we'll occupy all titles. There we go. Just grab that there quickly run down to his army. Uh, we can call in our allies, but that'll be our wife. She will, of course, say yes, because she is our wife. I mean, she won't actually be able to join in, but it can help with calculations. Um, oh, is that all under that one country? Yep. Uh, our wife has called us into the uh, to the Titlalian as, Sa as Samakiliad. So what? What war is this? Oh, so she's attacking these people. We'll just accept. There's no reason to not accept it. We will not lose any land or actually be involved in the fighting whatsoever. So it just makes her like us more. Oh, wow. They actually took over all this land. We probably should have declared on the other one then because we would have been able to take the, the new land that they were going to get. Okay. Have we caught up? We caught them. We're going to kill them. Oh, probably should have assigned a leader, but I messed up a bit there. Uh, swords are, sh are sharp and dangerous. I can leave better from inside my own castle. We gain Craven. Oh, no. That's not good. That lowered our um, amount. Like, that lowered um, the amount of clans like us. And also, you see, we can occupy land instantly as a nomad. So just by kind of sitting on it. Can we split this army in half and just go and sit on the next province as well. There we go. That should give us 100%, right? I think uh, only one piece of land has holdings or something. I can't. I could never actually figure out how it exactly worked, but it was something like that. Nah, we have to go and siege. We can go and siege. That's fine. It wasn't working out. As we need more than the province, like we need more war score than those provinces we're going to give us. We will have enough to siege. We don't have enough with uh, the 342. Although it is very close, but we will just hop in there. And the sieging will go a lot quicker than it was down in uh, Imperial Land because uh, none of these holdings are upgraded. So it's just going to be 10% each day. And that's actually pretty low. Like, um, inter like, we could get a lot more if we had a higher numbered amount, but. You know, that's fine. We don't need it to go much quicker than 10% every uh, 12 days. I mean, what's that? 120 days to conquer? It's not too bad. Uh, that should be 100% once we grab it. There we go, 100%. He wants to peace out. We surrender under these terms, accept. And we got it. Now, clans want more land. This is what I was saying earlier. See, now we have to hand out three counties or we can face having a revolt. Uh, the three counties I want to hand out are probably going to be these three, if I had to guess. It doesn't really matter. Um, but those seem like good ones. So I would like to split our clan. And I would first of all like to give the... Kavod here. That seems like a good choice. I mean, nothing's going to make us money, so Kavod's fine. I would then also like to give them... Uh... They need two more bits of land, so I want to grant you this one. I also want to grant you Yucho. 
There we go. Title loss on succession. Uh, we'd actually lose our clan on succession. Oh, that's because we don't have an heir, and our heir is n is now going to be our clan, our vassal. Yeah, it's because we have no uh, legal heir. So I like to talk. We have no family, nothing. So that that's the only reason why it's, we're going to lose our titles. Once we get an heir, then that'll disappear. And uh, we can call him into our other war. I don't really want to. He'll decline anyway, so that's fine. Uh, who do we want to attack now? How strong are Al's? Um, they're pretty weak actually. They do have two clans though, and, but combined the clans are not as strong as us. Uh, Carvese, could we... We could possibly kill him and then just take over his land, so I think we'll do that. We'll get this plot power up. Just uh, call people in. Just wait to call people in. Probably move all the way around here so we're next to the place we want to actually uh, kill. And let's see how many people are willing to join. We fulfilled the ambition to win a war. We will take a new ambition. We're going to take uh, have a son that increases our fertility in the game. Um, I don't think we have any negatives to fertility anywhere. I don't think mutant affects it, does it? I don't know. Uh, hedonist makes it more likely. So yeah, they've got hedonist. So that's probably got. They are a Sle Slaneshi person, so we'll probably uh, have a son soon. We also have three concubines, so we're we're really hedging our bets. Anyway, thank you for watching the first episode. Uh, if you want to see more, then please uh, leave a like, comment. Uh, I'm only going to say this on this episode, but I feel it's worth mentioning. It increases the search ranking and generally makes it uh, easier for people to find these videos. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.